Welcome to Not All Websites Are Created Equal. Just how easy is it to create a triggering article, get that article to the top of a Google search, and get paid? Now, this is going to be a series of videos based on digital detecting and digital knowledge uh, using the four lenses technique that has been mapped out, and we'll talk about that in the work studies section. Okay, a quick background. Sebastian Ajo of the Carolina Hurricanes is one of the team's leading scorers. He also missed about eight games at the beginning of the season. The Canes won all of those eight games. Many fans jokingly said the Canes should trade Ajo. So I write for the Car Cardiac Canes, which is a Carolina Hurricanes fan page. Now, we need to remember that fan pages typically do not pass the crap test. We're going to talk a little bit about the crap test, too. Some of the stuff that we're going to talk about in this is going to sound very similar to the crap test. We're going to take it a few steps further and talk about a couple of the different lenses that you can use to look at media. But remember, fan pages typically do not pass the crap test. Starting with the cardiac canes, we get paid by the click. For every time someone clicks on one of our articles, we're going to get paid. So the more money we make is based on how many clicks we get. And so the more clicks we get, the more money we are going to make. Okay, this is a screen grab of a Google search if you type in Trade Sebastian Ajo. The first article that you're going to see comes from March of 22, and they're talking about the New York Islanders Sebastian Ajo, not the Carolina Hurricanes Sebastian Ajo. But this is the article that we want to look at. It says, trade Sebastian Ajo and get what? From Cardiac Cane. And you will notice that there are tons of results. This is the second article that pops up. Again, just to reiterate, it's the second on a Google search if you type in the term trade Sebastian Ajo. Now, we're going to talk about that specific term throughout the rest of this presentation, trade Sebastian Ajo. We're going to show you the backside of how to create these kind of triggering articles in just a second. But all I had to do was manipulate the URL, focus keywords, SEO title, slug, and then write the article. You'll see that here in just a second. Okay, on an article's page, as you are beginning to write, you are allowed to change the URL. And so you will notice I fit the URL to specific terms that were going to get noticed in a Google search algorithm. I also changed the focus keywords to match the URL, which would ultimately match a search term if someone began to look for articles about trading Sebastian Ajo. Okay, this. SEO title and the slug. This is exactly what the search engine is going to use to find those articles. So you'll notice I've kept everything consistent with trade Sebastian Ajo right here in the slug and in the SEO. Again, this is what the search engine is going to use to find articles if you type in particular terms into the search engine. Okay, this article was intentionally triggering to get clicks. One of the lenses that you will need to look at any piece of information is triggering. What response do you have to the article in question, to the article that you find in a search engine? Now, in the article, I expressly said that the cane should not trade Sebastian Ajo, but the way I manipulated the URL, the focus keywords, the SEO, and the slug was to say that the Canes should trade Sebastian Ajo. And I got lots of hate tweets on the internet. We're going to talk about hate tweets and doxing in a few episodes, but this is an early call, something to call back on when we get to that area. Here are some great examples of the hate tweets that I got from various Twitter members and fans of the Carolina Hurricanes throughout the process of this article being posted on Twitter. 
unadulterated trash. You were so embarrassing. I hate you. Get a life. All time low for cardiac cane. You see some examples here. You will notice that because I am not doxing these people, I have taken the precautions of blacking out their Twitter handles and their pictures so you have no real idea about who these people are. You do see Cardiac Kane's Twitter handle and my Twitter handle to show the example of the responses that I got from this article. But the numbers do not lie, okay? By on December 28th, I ended up with 48,000 plus views of this tweet. I got three retweets. I got 32 quote tweets and 27 likes. That's not to mention comments and replies to comments from all of those as well. A month later, this article was still getting 437 clicks on per month in the analytics. That means that I'm getting paid for every one of those clicks. And the reason that is important is because I am getting paid per click. We're going to keep talking about that in a few minutes, but I'm going to reiterate that here. Every time someone clicks on that article, I am getting paid. So you'll see here, 437 people were still clicking on this during January of 2023, and Sebastian Ajo had already returned and was scoring plenty of goals. The Canes continued to win but people were still finding this article and still clicking on it, paying me money. Here's how we're going to talk and tie this back into the triggering lens that you need to look at as you consume media on digital spaces. It is easy to create articles that trigger a response. The presence of emotional triggers is viewed as a red flag but does not necessarily mean that the information is false. What should you do if you are triggered by something you find on the internet? First, you need to stop. You need to manage your emotions however you choose to do that. You can count to three, you can count to 10, you can count to 15, you can click away, you can put the article down, whatever it needs to do to happen that you manage your emotions. Then you need to take a step back and you need to dig deeper. Determine the credibility. This kind of goes back to the crap test and either determine the credibility of the article or abandon the information completely and continue, okay? Now, triggering lenses can also help people understand how reckless online behavior can damage their reputation. Think about the hate tweets that I got. I could just as easily call them out in this presentation, or even worse, I could have let anybody and their uncle know who was tweeting me hate tweets, but I didn't. So I took a minute to respond to those tweets. I calmed my emotions. I dug deeper into their accounts and said, you know what, I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to move on. That's what you need to do if you were triggered in finding information online. Okay, the original slideshow that I pulled all this information from was created by Heather Barkley, Jennifer Cassidy, and Lydia Dextire. These are the folks who came up with an original presentation about the four lenses that you need to look at as you run across information online. So there's who can get the credit for this. I am giving you examples thereof. We'll see you on the next one.